I have like negative five minutes to film this video, so I'm gonna keep it as short and sweet as physically possible, but I wanted to get it up because so many people have asked me to share my labor and delivery story, my birth story, and it, it was one of those things where I was like, do I wanna share it? Don't I wanna share it? It's such a personal, intimate experience, obviously, for me and my family, so I wanna be very respectful of you know my privacy, the privacy of my baby girl, my husband, and everybody who's involved on the day. But I do want to share it because social media has finally taken on a new meaning for me. I kind of found it very pointless and more negative than positive for a very, very long time. But as I've kind of said on my Instagram account, um, in stories often, you know, I'm so appreciative to all of you guys throughout my entire pregnancy journey, um, for the support that you've shown me and the connection that I've felt with other women via this platform has made such an impact on me on a much deeper level than I ever expected social media to kind of take on. So I am going to share it. Um, not going to get into the kind of nitty gritty details or anything like that, but I do want to share a little bit about my experience because it was a crazy one and it was also an insanely positive one. So to start out, we decided to induce um, just a couple of days before the mark of the time that the doctor would strongly advise that I induced. I always planned on being in hospital. I have an amazing doctor who's been my doctor actually for a decade. So it was very cool to kind of go on this pregnancy and birth journey with her. And my husband and her are like <laughs> best buds. So we, we went into the hospital. We induced I was very ready to go so I actually didn't need much help anyway I was contracting on my way to the hospital so timing worked out soon after inducing the contractions like really ramped up quite quickly and at that point um, my husband contacted our doula and was like hey you need to get here now um you know things are are starting to happen so our doula came for those of you who don't know what a doula is um my doula informed me that apparently the word doula in i believe greek means servant and it's basically her whole purpose is to help serve the parents throughout the birthing experience to make sure that our wishes are always met and she was really an advocate for us and what we wanted to happen as far as our birth plan was concerned she was an amazing support to us as far as you know coping with the labor i can't stress enough how amazing this woman was um her name's Tamika, she's phenomenal. I'm gonna link to her Facebook page down below in the description box because she's so funny. She doesn't even have like a proper website set up, but she is so amazing. So if you're in the Los Angeles area and in need of a doula, please, please, please contact Tamika because she was a complete and total game changer for us. Apparently, the doctor said the goal with contractions is to kind of get them to be happening every two to three minutes because that means like your body's doing its thing. Mine were coming on like every 20 to 30 seconds. So it was just kind of this wave of constant contracting. It was absolutely insane. And like when it started out, I think my husband may have the photo. If he does, I'm going to get him to give it to me so I can intercut it here. But basically when the contractions started, I was like curling my hair. <laughs> it was like, I want to look cute for the pictures. <laughs> like I'm just going to be here doing my hair because I can totally cope with this. And then like, I don't know what happened, but it completely 180 and it just got so insanely intense. And my husband was so amazing. He's just the best guy ever and the most supportive human being on the planet and he along with my doula helped me cope through this insane roller coaster of contractions different body movements different massage techniques all sorts of things um, that they were doing to help me cope we also had essential oils going we had you know fake obviously you can't have real candlelight in a hospital major safety hazard but we had like the little like flickering battery operated candles to like set the relaxing vibe. And again, our doula was just so amazing. I labored in total for about 18 hours through the night and into the next day. And I got an epidural. To those women out there who do it without the epidural, whoa, you are beasts. You are like next level superhumans. And I, 
I applaud you. There's no way that I could have done it without the epidural. Um, that made everything just a much more enjoyable experience all around because I, I mean, I, I couldn't even breathe. Like my contractions were so constant. I didn't even have any recovery time in between. So the epidural was a game changer that allowed us to kind of like laugh our way through the rest of the labor experience. And we got some, got some Z's in. My husband and I got a little nap time. And again, my doula was just there like wide awake the entire time right by my side. So anytime I kind of rolled over, my eyes were open. She was giving me water. She was so phenomenal. And she was also photographing the whole time, which was also like just extra bonus points for us because we have so many amazing memories from the day but then everything took a bit of a crazy turn they came in they checked me um, to see how dilated I was and I think I had made it to about five centimeters then uh, about half an hour later I got checked again and they were like oh you, you're one more centimeter now you're six centimeters so in my head I was like okay go time is around the corner like I'm doing this, this is happening. I'm gonna give birth to this little girl. And I was really excited because again, I've had such a positive experience thus far with the laboring, you know? It was it was something that we were able to really enjoy. I think I fell back asleep and had a little bit more of a nap and a few hours later, my doctor came back and she checked me again and she told me that I hadn't dilated any further at all. And in fact, I um, was starting to swell really badly on the inside. So things were likely not going to progress. They were actually looking like they were starting to move backwards. I wanted to hold out just a little bit longer to kind of see if anything changed and the swelling was not stopping. So at that point, um, my doctor advised us to, you know, gear up for a c-section baby was totally fine the entire time she's like okay mom whatever like you're swelling <laughs> this is going on that's going on she was cool as a cucumber in there but it was strongly advised for you know my sake and her sake in the long term to just move forward with the c-section because had we left it any longer more complications could have arisen I had a bit of a freak out that's a massive understatement I had a major freak out. I've never had surgery apart from my wisdom teeth being removed. I've never broken a bone. I've gotten stitches like once in my life. I've been fortunate to not have to have uh, any surgery or anything dramatic happen like that as far as my health and safety is concerned. So I really didn't know what to expect. For those of you who don't know, I'm sure everybody does know for a C-section, you're wide awake. And you know, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie with Hayden Christensen. Granted, he was supposed to be under, he wasn't. But I was like, okay, I'm gonna be awake. I'm gonna be awake, hopefully not freaking out, but like I'm well aware of what's going on behind the curtain. But I'm always so terrified of surgery because it's like, oh my gosh, what if you can feel things? Like that would be uh, terrifying and awful. Obviously something out of like a horror movie. So, you know, I'm sure that doesn't happen very often, but I was just starting to really kind of scare myself and I needed to just purge that fear and purge the emotions. And my doula again was there by my side. So amazing and comforting to me in that moment. And of course my doctor who's like become such a great friend of ours is, is amazing. And she at one point just like cleared everybody out of the room and just spoke to me one-on-one. -on -one. She's so strong and she's so I don't know, inspirational as a woman. And I just trust her so much that she really gave me that kind of boost of strength and confidence that I needed to just, once I had let all of the tears, all the ugly cry, just like leave my body. I was like, okay, it's go time. Let's do this. Everything happened really fast from that moment. The anesthesiologist did whatever he did. Um, I got wheeled out and, and into the operating room, which, you know, you're, it's such a vulnerable feeling to to be on that table and everything and I, I remember once the the surgery started I was just like talking to my husband the whole time I was like okay you need to keep making a direct eye contact with me okay I'm really totally numb I don't feel anything but I am aware that this is happening and that's happening and for some reason like vocalizing 
my fear and how like, I was like, this is really freaky because I know that they're doing this right now. And you know, whatever, like, just like narrating the surgery. Uh, but that made me feel better. And my doctor was amazing. She's like cracking jokes that totally eased our minds. We had a playlist going, um, which was so funny. You know, my husband at one point was like, isn't this so us? Like we're here, we're having a baby and we're just listening to Oasis. And it's like, like, yeah, that is so us. I'll never forget that sound of her little cry because obviously, again, the sheet's up. So it, it's, I imagine, a little bit different than actually delivering vaginally because I imagine in that case, unless your eyes are closed because you're like pushing so hard, you'd see the baby visually. But I didn't. I heard her first before I saw her. And I just remember hearing her cry and like, I... Again, I want to be so respectful to my family about how intimate this experience was, but I will just say without getting teary-eyed or too emotional and oversharing here, like it was uh, the most emotional experience of my life does not begin to explain it. Uh, the connection to my husband in that moment and just like, whoa, I can't even say it without starting to get teary-eyed, but I was like, I'm not going to get emotional in this video. Um, yeah, so crazy just hearing her cry for the first time. And the first thing I said, I was like, oh my God, it's the cutest cry. She's got such a girly little cry. <laughs> it's so true. Like she just sounded so dainty and, and so petite and adorable. And um, yeah, so she, you know, was delivered happy and healthy, six pounds, 12 ounces, 20 and a half inches long. Um, she's a Libra baby. I, I, um, okay, I'm going to like go off on a tangent now and continue the real story. But again, I don't know if I'm going to include this or not. I believe once they delivered her, things started to get a little bit crazier than anyone anticipated. And I actually started to hemorrhage. I had a a uterine artery tear and a right broad ligament rip. My doctor tried to show me on like a diagram of a woman's insides, like what exactly that meant. I started to lose a lot of blood. My body was, you know, reacting um, negatively. I started to kind of go in and out of consciousness and um, my husband was just so amazing sitting there with the baby, like right on my cheek and just talking to me and so calmly. So Josh, just so funny. And, and like, he lights up a room. So just like so charismatic. And I would have never known that anything was actually wrong. If, if I, you know, I was feeling what I was feeling, but the way he was acting and reacting to what I was saying was like, I'm freaking out for no reason. Like you're all good. And I had no idea that I was actually in any sort of trouble at any point because he is just the best and so supportive and managed to stay like cool, calm and collected the entire time I would have been totally shitting myself. <laughs> and, uh, and he just kept it together for me and for us. Our doctors, you know, were phenomenal. They got me all sewn shut um, and everything was good to go. I literally felt like the color come back to my face. Like I felt life come back into my body and I was suddenly alert and aware again and felt actually totally fine. Like nothing had ever happened. They took us over to the recovery room. I was able to, you know, have some skin on skin time with my little one. You know, it took, took a couple days for us to process everything that had kind of gone on. It took a couple days, if not longer for me to process not having my birth go the way that I wanted it to go. I know that that happens for a lot of women, um, it's just not something you ever actually anticipate happening for you. I'd had such a flawless pregnancy, you know, and of course natural pregnancy symptoms, but I never had any health issues. The baby never had any health issues. Like so grateful. We've been so lucky and to, you know, so I just kind of assumed that my labor and delivery would go the same way, you know, everything would go according to plan and it would all be, 
good, no issues. Um, so I really wasn't anticipating having to kind of change everything that I had had ingrained in my head of how I wanted the day to go. I can't imagine it now any other way, you know, and I'm so glad that I got to labor for those 18 hours and, and got to experience that. I wouldn't take that back for the world. I enjoyed every minute of it, even when I was like on all fours, breathing through agony of <laughs> contraction after contraction. I loved it. And I got to have the C-section experience too, which was, you know, very cool and um, different, you know, interesting, interesting to be uh, awake on a table while people are operating on you and, you know, having a conversation and listening to voices. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I wouldn't change any of it actually. It just wasn't what I had initially had in my head. As far as birth plans and all of that good stuff, ladies, like obviously have an idea of how you want it to go, but also just let life happen, you know, and, and let this new life come into the world and happen the way that that's meant to happen. I'm just so grateful for the, the team of people that I had supporting me first and foremost, obviously my wonderful husband, um, who is just amazing and uh what a trip you know we got to share such an incredible unique experience with one another it just certainly bonded us uh even more than we already were if that is even physically possible <laughs> and to my amazing doula who was right by my side the whole time tamika you're a rock star i i can't imagine you know how josh and i's experience would have been without you and of course our amazing doctor um Again, she was so phenomenal. She's been so phenomenal throughout the entire journey. Um, I, she is an absolute rock star. I'm gonna link to her book, Sheology, below. It's a must read. Reese Witherspoon actually wrote the foreword because that's how much of a rock star my doctor is. And to the amazing team at St. John's in Santa Monica, all of you guys, all of the nurses, thank you so much. Yeah. I am so happy to have gotten to share this story with you guys. I hope you enjoyed hearing it. If you have any questions at all or, or want to share your birth stories, your labor and deliver stories, uh, please do in the comment section below. I would love, love, love to hear all about your journeys after all. That's why I made this video in hopes of connecting with all of you beautiful people. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.